All right, so uh, here we are in my storage room with two very comparable machines. This is the battle of the self-propelled multi-speed machines. Vacuum cleaners, specifically. Let me pull them next to each other. I'm going to give you a few criteria and have you choose which machine you think would be the best for you. So this is a video for if you are choosing to refurbish a machine yourself, buy a refurbished machine, or just generally want something arguably entertaining to watch. So the Hoover power drive is out of the 1980s it's a bagged vacuum they're both bagged as you can see i hope you, you can um both of these are bagged vacuum cleaners with a very different form factors the hoover power drive is in a more typical shape to what you would see nowadays the kirby looks like it's straight out of the 60s because in a way it is they took a design and have been running with it for the past forever. So, for criteria, we'll work uh, from the top down, I guess. The Kirby, how the self-propelled mechanism works, the entire handle assembly. Let's see if I can find a way to hold this. The entire handle assembly pivots or slides down there to actuate the self-propel system, whereas on the Hoover, it slides up here and much further too. Now, as for which self-propel system is more effective, it really depends, you know, machine to machine. The Hoover took over a year to perfect to get it to a spot i like it pushes like a feather it pushes like you're barely even holding a vacuum kirby the same ordeal it took a very long time to get it adjusted how i like and it doesn't push quite as easy but it pushes very smoothly but as for variability the kirby you have more options there is a plate deep you know buried under this crap where you can screw it in and then Gotta adjust the screws up here for the spring tension. Then you can get it so it pushes just as easy forward and backwards. You can bias it one way or another. Hoover, you don't get that. Hoover, uh, the best you can do is clean the clutch plates, take off the headlight cover, and adjust where the cable is positioned, and that's it. Um, now, how they pivot, which one you prefer is up to you. I really don't mind either. I feel like this one just seems, you know, it makes more sense. The issue with the Hoover is you can't hold it, you can't like carry it around by this handle without eventually breaking it. Now, working down the bags. Or I guess we'll go with the power switches because the Hoover, everything's controlled up here. You know, that's on. With, that's normal speed. This is a main difference. This is what makes me prefer the Hoover over the Kirby. You get low power and then high power. High power for cleaning, especially dirty surfaces or deep cleaning or whatever. Whereas with the Kirby, it's two separate switches. You have the on switch, then your low and high speed switch. Another thing, who with a Kirby, you've got to turn the self propel on, but we'll get there. With them being separate switches, you can just pick one and keep it that way, which I suppose could prevent wear because they're two separate assemblies. This just feels a little too weak for how much you'll be hitting it with your foot, but I also have three motors that fit this machine that are multi-speed, so I don't need to worry about that. Other people, on the other hand, you might want to stomp it in and fuck yourself over. Hoover, it's all one big thing. 
and it's mostly basic parts you can find at a hardware store. Kirby's a little more particular with it. Since the Hoover is low then high speed, I don't necessarily have a lot of floor mats, so I just go to places where my dad, you know, usually moves around because he doesn't have us half the time. Uh, usually the spots where he's going around, I'll click it up to high and then vacuum there more. With the Kirby, the speed is, the feature is the low speed, not the high speed. So you can turn it to low for mats you don't want to suck up super hard, which it's not too useful. It doesn't lose too much suction and airflow when you flip it down. The speed of the motor decreases and makes it much quieter, though. You don't lose much power, though. Now, speaking of power, I guess we'll go to cleaning performance next. Um, that's kind of gray area, because this Hoover has 5.1 amp. Originally it was 5.6, but I switched up. Blah, blah, blah. But, I suppose I can bring up a machine that'll give the Kirby more than a run for its money. Fuck, never hit continue recording. Now this is where we get to a big difference. Um, this machine, this guy here, this one, my Red Hoover power drive. Now, um, this one will give the Kirby a run for its money, because this one's got a 7.1, I think, amp motor. Let me check. <laughs> 7.2 amp motor. And the Kirby has a 7 amp motor. So now they're neck and neck with power. I'd say that the Hoover wins. Not because it's got a more powerful motor or better designed fan, which it probably does, because Kirby fans tend to be in much worse shape over time than Hoover fans. Um, the reason the Hoover wins with power is because of the small cleaning area. If I can get the side right. Yeah, this side has around this much area for just the belt. From here to here is what you're cleaning with. Which means you have much more power density. And with that, the Hoover takes the cake for power. And not because it's more powerful. Well, I mean, even if it is, I'm not fully sure there. Haven't had this one for long enough to tell you. Um, even if it's more powerful, it wins just by default. They could have the same power motor. Same fan and everything. The Hoover would win just because it's got a smaller base. Now, let's uh, take the even match out of here in terms of power. Mildly different features. <laughs> Transmission sounds so funny when you just push it. It's actually the wheels, but whatever. Um, now that we have the whole power thing out of the way, this one, when you flip it to high, I'd say it's even with the Kirby. Um, now... For bags. For bags, they both take fairly similarly sized bags. Ho the Hoover, it's harder to find, um, what is it, uh, HEPA type A bags than it is to find HEPA Kirby bags. Oh, yeah, this one I've been using a lot. It's full up to here already. Um, yeah, this is, so this is a type Z bag, I'm pretty sure. HEPA... Nope, it's type Y. So, yeah. It fill, smaller bags fill up quick. But bags are harder to find for the Hoover, but they last forever. The accessibility on the seal on the Hoover, I'd say, isn't quite as great as the Kirby. Let me, uh, it's something about the Kirby you need almost two hands to unzip it. But it's got this sweet curve to it, so you get full access to the whole thing. And it's got the twist connect, or the F connector, if you choose to install one. Let me uh, zoom back in so you get the good camera quality. Because um, I never fucking clean it. Um, you can have an F connector or a twist connector. I choose the twist connector because it's just classic. Alright. Now... 
cord. Hoover wins. You just press the button and it's instantly back in there. Kirby's is longer though, so if that's what you care about, Kirby wins. You gotta wind it manually, but you can also just set it here. On the newer ones you can't because it's all slumped down and it'll just fall off. Um, now, for noise level, Kirby wins. It's a little bit higher pitch, but the, it sound, the Hoover just sounds like it's more imbalanced. It sounds as though, uh, it sounds as though it's permanently running at the resonance frequency of your house. So, I'd say if you're vacuuming without any ear protection, Kirby's better in the long run. They're just, the Kirby's are newer. And they have better balancing technology for the motor. So I'd say, yeah, they're the Kirby wins. For floor adjustability, I'd say they're even. The Hoover Power Drive, um, it's got shag, which you can see how far up it lifts the nozzle off the bottom. That's a good uh, finger and a half. And there's plush, and there's self-adjust, which is, you know, it rubs on the floor. There. Yeah, I'm doing this one-handed. It rides better on the floor, too, which is nice. The Kirby, you have... Uh, Six-level height adjustment. But it's much noisier. It, six settings does the job because you have the self-propel system to push it if you click it down too far. That's what's nice about self-propelled machines. Their older ones aren't so great. The ones that aren't self-propelled. You gotta get it just right, and if it isn't, you know, if there isn't a correct setting for your floor, you're kind of effed in the A. Um, serviceability. Kirby takes it. You know, everything's laid out right in front of you. You get the motor, transmission, everything right when you just take off the cover and handle and all this. Hoover, four screws, this white cover comes up, you know, you have to take off a wheel and then four more screws, you get the transmission off. And then, or no, three more screws to get the whole front thingy off. Then once you, you know, the front part with the brush roller, then taking off a wheel and then four more screws takes the transmission assembly off. And then you have to take off two little, uh, thingies on the side and then you get to the motor well then you have to take out four more screws to get to the motor and then you got to take you got to take the bag off too yeah it's just a nightmare yeah the amount of times i've forgotten a spacer and wanted to shoot myself because i didn't want to do all the work to get back in there is innumerable so if you're up for a challenge hoover's the guy for you now Kirby, way easier, way more serviceable, but you gotta remember the clamshell seal and stuff for it'll leak and be a mess. Looks, depends what you prefer. They both look just fine to me. Nice part about the Kirby, it's something I really like, it makes it feel higher quality. You can just grab the handle and tilt it down. That seems so nice. Just grab it and tilt it down. I don't know why, but I'm just not a huge fan of being to press the pedal, even though on this type of machine it's very convenient. Headlights. For me personally, the Hoover wins, just because, you know, none of it shines in your eye. How it works is it's got a metal reflector in here, so it only comes out these very bottom parts. So when you put the handle up, you know, the headlights kind of turned off. And I don't know, neat feature. Uh, curvy headlights on, as long as the vacuum's on, it's bright, it can be in your face if you choose an LED, if you put an LED in there. Now, how the self-propel system feels. 
I'd say the Kirby wins. It feels a lot less jerky. It feels smooth, you know. It also can depend on the machine. This one's got a slower gear ratio. But you will have to clean the wheels on this one since they aren't ribbed. You have to clean them, otherwise it won't get good traction in your carpet. And it'll like, feel like you're pushing a ton of bricks, as I've mentioned in a shorts video. Accessibility for clean out. 50-50. You can take the nozzle off on this one. When you flip this over, you can take the rug plate off and a whole like thing flips out that you can unclog, push it back, and then put the rug plate back on. Neither of these need a screwdriver to remove the rug plate, which is convenient. Now, yeah, <laughs> it's, and also, you know, the bag fill tube comes out with just a wiggle on this one. This one you can just take the whole emptor off. It's right there, you know. Or like, and you can demo it. It's on there usually. Never mind. I guess I won't make you suffer through watching me demo it. You get the idea. No. Is there anything else really? I don't think so. There's not much else. Wait. Wait, yeah, uh, Kirby, Hefty, Hoover, a pinch lighter. It's not really recognizable. When you get to this one, which has a plastic transmission instead of a metal one, it's very noticeably lighter. So yeah, there's your, uh, comparison. Suppose if you want to demo, I can post one, but yeah. There's your comparison between these two machines. If you want any other info, just ask.